In the race to cut carbons and create clean energy in Israel, these pioneers are leading the pack. American Yossi Abramowitz, Kibbutz Couture member Ed Hoffland, and their U.S.-based partner David Rosenblatt have built Israel's first commercial solar power energy field. On these two acres of land in the Negev Desert, over 18,000 photovoltaic plates convert the sun's energy into electricity. Only about 1% of Israel's energy comes from green or clean sources, and this is an attempt to boost up that number. The field of solar dreams was Abramovitz's idea. The dream is really to have Israel be the first major economy to transform from being carbon-based, burning dirty fossil fuels, to being solar-based. 60% of this country is desert and the sun is nice and strong. So strong it will beat down on these solar panels 349 days of the year. The solar radiation can reach 1100 watt per square meter. This is a very high uh, amount and it's, it's one of the best places in the world to have uh, solar photovoltaic panels to generate green electricity. But no one had tried to harness the sun's power like this before Abramowitz and his partners. They fought an uphill political battle for five years. We, it needed a lot of vision and craziness to th five years ago when there was no regulation in place and there was no industry and no culture of solar energy or alternative energy for that fact here in Israel to, to dream about something like this. This is the sound of electricity being generated. These cables with perseverance and funding from German engineering giant Siemens, the solar field began operating last June. It pumps nearly five megawatts of electricity into the national grid at its peak level. It's a modest start given Israel's peak average use of 11,000 megawatts, but Abramovitz says he's just beginning. So right across the way, you're going to build a solar field eight times the size of this one. Right on the other side of the day trees will be 125 acres for 40 megawatts which is a third of Eilat's peak energy needs, yeah. That will help cut down Eilat's dependence on diesel. Abramovitz says the Arva Power Company will build another 50 solar fields in the next five years. Israel has set a national goal that by the year 2020, 10% of its energy sources will come from renewable energy. In solar terms, that means about 4,000 megawatts of solar energy. This field only produces five, and in the future, the company would like to produce about 500, its competitors another 1,000, but that will still leave it far short of the goal of 2020. Many people say the problem is that the government isn't moving quickly enough to remove caps and build new grids and let so many entrepreneurs into this game. Abramovitz dealt with that frustration firsthand. But solar energy is still more expensive than natural gas, and it requires much more land. Clean energy analysts say removing caps on building solar fields may result in price hikes for consumers. The government is wise to be cautious, former energy advisor Jonathan Friedman says. We want to provide a steady, measured approach to the issue of subsidies of renewable energy until they become what's called grid parity, uh, comparable in cost to natural gas. Abramowitz is betting the cost of photovoltaic panels will keep falling and he can then produce thousands of megawatts of solar energy. As the first solar field in the Holy Land, Abramovitz has made it a point to honor the three monotheistic religions that share history here. Ten pillars will be built with sayings on land sustainability from the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. A statue of the universal figure Ruth the Moabite was also built on the eastern edge of the field. She welcomes the sun every morning. Abramowitz has accomplished a great deal since immigrating to Israel a little more than five years ago. And he now has some new bragging rights after the Jerusalem Report's list of the most influential Jewish people. I'm a big John Stewart fan, so the fact that I placed uh, 26 when he was 27. It would be fun to see those two on The Daily Show. Jordana Miller, JN1, Kibbutz Keturah.